the, the South African Psychological Association was established in 1948. I think it was in Kimberley, the meeting. Uh, but it was basically the university uh, professors who established it. But all the universities were involved. And gradually, psychologists became members. It was a new thing, and it didn't take off very fast. But gradually, it developed into quite a strong organization. Uh, it was accepted by the British Psychological Association, the Dutch one, and so on, as a, as a fellow organization. But in, I don't know precisely when. When you see Con Cruer, you'll get more information on that. But at some point there, a black psychologist at NIPR and a professor, I forgot the, the, the man at the NIPR's name now, but a professor at the uh, University of Zululand, is an Indian man, the two of them applied for membership. And there was nothing in the Constitution that said anything about race or color. And Con Creer, who was secretary at the time, simply administratively accepted them. But then some of the members discovered that they now all of a sudden had mixed membership. And this was a shocking thing. This was not admissible. And so they attempted to change the Constitution. And there was a stopgap attempt to say that they could accept blacks until there were 12 of them, and then we would help them to establish their own association. Well, that one was just voted out very quickly, because it was stupid. And this happened at a Congress in Stellenbosch in 1962, or 61, I'm not, 62 I think it was. Uh, it was very hotly debated. We spent at evenings large portions of the day about this, debating this thing. And, uh, eventually, it was brought to the vote, and uh, the Cape Town people actually did what the ANC nowadays does. Well, they bust in people. They brought in as many votes as people, who, all the psychologists who could vote. But I think it would probably have succeeded even apart from the UCT people or the Cape Town people. And the vote was against changing the Constitution. So we came out of that Congress just the same as ever before. Then there was an attempt to get legislation to prevent it. And I know about that because my prof, Hartung, was, uh, was one of three people who were sent to go and talk to Jan de Klerk, who was then Minister of Education. And Jan de Klerk said yes, he would introduce legislation to that effect. But when it got to cabinet level, the cabinet was divided about it, and they said no. Uh, John Foster specifically, he was still at that time, uh, he wasn't Minister of Justice, he was whatever the title is, but in any case, he was a member of cabinet, and he specifically was against it. Uh, and there was enough division in the cabinet that nothing of this other kind happened. Uh, Verwoord then wrote a letter to the people who were involved in this, saying that the nation shouldn't always wait for the government to do things, that the nation should sometimes take the initiative. So they took the initiative to establish a separate association. It was called the Psychological Institute of the Republic of South Africa, PERSA. There was a meeting in Pretoria. It must have been in 1963, early in the year. All the psychologists at Pochestrom went there. I went along. I wanted to see what was going to happen. As I walked into the hall, I met a former colleague of mine at the railways, and I said to him, did you sign here? He said, no. I said, I didn't either. That was a list on which you signed to resign from the old association, and then one on which you 
signed to us, joined the association. And this was more or less blood river, blood river, the way it was handled there with religion and politics mixed up, as you can't believe it, like just the Bruderbond could do, because the Bruderbond was behind all of this. Uh, in any case, they established the thing. There were several people who were prominent in the civil service and the education departments and so on. They sent out circulars that people should join this association. And the should was really have to. Uh, they did another thing. They opened it where we had an, a rule that full membership was only for people with uh, a master's degree and associate membership was for people at most lowest qualification was an, an honors degree. They opened it up to people who had a BA degree in psychology. In the process, they immediately had a very large membership, larger than the old association. But uh, some of us then stayed out, Afrikaners. Was Davi Ghost was one, Rui Kampfer was one, Dreyer Kruer was one. Uh, I can't remember. Ampi Muller was one, but uh, Bob Schlierbusch was one. A significant number of Afrikaners, but a smallish group. The Afrikaners were forced into that one, really. Uh, a friend of mine, a very good friend from university days, told me he was principal of a school, but he had an MA in psychology. He'd never bothered about membership of an association. He said he virtually got an instruction to join. I was in a very odd situation because I was the outsider in Pochostrum University. Uh, I just never said anything. But then the first circular, that second circular that came out from Persa, said that they were organizing a congress and I was going to read a paper on clinical psychology. I wrote back and I said, I'm sorry, I didn't join the association and I unfortunately will not be able to present there. And that's had the cat, am cat among the pigeons. Next one, they now this was the first circular. The second circular came in which they apologized to Dr. Strumpfer if they had embarrassed him in any way. But with the full details, he didn't join the association. Of course, it made me a black sheep of the family. Just above that, there was the a little item that said, Welcome to Professor Chris Kutsia, the rector of Pochostrum University, who accepted as an honorary president of the association. Now this these two things next to each other was sending a message. Okay, nobody talked to me about it. Nobody bothered about it, really, there. After the second Congress, Professor Hatton came back to me and he said he now had an instruction to come and talk to me. Uh, other people feel that I should f be with my people. It was wrong to be away from your own people. I said to him, did they think that this came easy to me? I could tell him that I literally one night did not sleep on this problem before I had done nothing, decided not to do anything. And I said, this is a value thing, it's very deep-seated, and I'm not going to change. He also said to me that the Vice President of the, HS, uh, of the CSIR was going to talk to Davi Ghos and pressure Davi Ghos to also come into the new organization. Subsequently, Davi said to me, he said to them, when do you want my resignation? My job is waiting for me in America. And that was the end of it. They, they never bothered him again. Hatang then said to me, the cabinet was divided on this issue and he will tell people that his department is divided on this issue. And that was the end of it. He never in any way put pressure on me from a political point of view. He just left it to that. You there, we here. It's sad that we're not together. We don't go to the same conferences anymore. But that was what happened at various places. 
Louis Comfer was at Port Elizabeth as an associate professor. He was offered a job at Rao as professor of industrial psychology. He came for an interview. The next morning, the head of the department phoned him at the hotel at the airport and said to him, you have the job provided you just joined Persa. Louis said, I don't want the job. There was that kind of pressure, but okay, it was typical of the time, the times, but gradually it died down. As the older people who were the hotheads became less active, the younger members of Persa began to say, but this doesn't make sense. And they actually changed their constitution to remove the color bar from it. And that opened up the possibility that we could get together again. And we then established the committee on which Lily Gerdes and Con Creer and I represented uh, SAPA. And we started talking. But by then, the clinical psychologist had said, this is nonsense. We want, don't want politics involved and established their own clinical society. Counseling psychologists then did the same thing. So in the end, it was four associations that we had to get together. And that took some doing. You had to have a, con a constitution that satisfied everybody. And the first draft of that constitution was written by Rita and myself. The two of us put it together and then took it to the committee. Well, we were assigned to do it because we were representing different associations. She was from the counseling. What I proposed was association based on something in Renzo's Lickert's organization style uh, with separate units but not with one central body. It was a, a very flexible association. It didn't get to be like that, but it was very detailed, discussed in detail. It took some years, I think, I don't know how long it was, two or three years eventually before. We, by then they started after about a year of this, the first congress was held here at RAU, where both associations came together. It was a joint conference, and it was said the joint conference of psychology. And then at the next conference, uh, where the two were meeting together, we established the new association in Bloemfontein. And that was then, I suggested that instead of SAPA, we changed the name to PASA, Psychological Association of South Africa. And PASA then was the new association, which lasted for some years quite successfully. After the radical change in the government level, it was before 1994, uh, some, it was specifically Sats Cooper and a friend of his, an Indian guy and a colored guy were leading the opposition who said that this is still an apartheid orientation, oriented organization. And eventually a new organization was established and in PASA we supported it and joined up to form uh, PSYOPs that exists now. Uh, so that's the history of bringing them all together. It wasn't a happy history because there was extremism, in my opinion at least, extremism to the opposite side. Uh, and it wasn't, a, uh, Congresses weren't, initially at least, I haven't been to one for years now. The last one I attended was a pleasant Congress, except at the opening meeting where the President spoke and talked about the white Afrikaner males who had done this and that in his opening address, with a platoon of overseas people also present on the platform. I felt like walking out because it was disgusting what he was saying. I thought, I can't walk out because he would say, you see there. But after that, I resigned from the association because I felt I couldn't really, I was retired already, couldn't afford to go to Congresses. Uh, and all I got out of it was the journal. Then some time later I got, I applied for emeritus membership first, and which was just a routine thing. And then I was told that the constitution has been changed to wipe out that category. We could become honorary members, but we have to submit a, a CV and apply for it and we have to continue paying membership fees. 
And I said, I don't need that. You don't apply for anything that's honorary is given to you. And I, I can get the journal in a library, that's all. Forget it. So I'm out of organized psychology for I don't know how many years already. And then things went badly again in Persa and eventually the industrial psychologists, where I still was active, separated out and formed Sayopsa. Sayopsa is a new vereniging, but that was established anew. It was a brand new organization, but PASA joined in there. Uh, and we attempted to bring everything together that could be brought together. It was an active thing from PASA's side too. We acknowledged that we were part of this lengthy history with Persa involved and so on. And Persa was obviously involved in, in PASA as half of, the, of establishing the thing. Uh, so we could see the, the logic of, of establishing something drastically new. And then Psyopsa was part of, it wasn't, I can't remember the labels, but it was an institute first of Saisa. And then through a variety of things that uh, happened that weren't necessarily always pleasant, but in any case, uh, Psyopsa went their own way.